So for the past few weeks, I have been savoring this Kona Hanzo build. This is one of two new frames that I'm building up in early 2023, and it's particularly exciting because I haven't ridden a proper hardtail in a really long time. Now, so far I've done an unboxing on the frame, a couple of how-tos regarding the fork and the cranks, but I figure it's probably time for a proper bike check. So in this video, it's a rundown on the 2023 Kona Hanzo ST steel hardtail build. So for starters, this is the new 2023 model. It's a size medium and it's a steel version of the frame. Well, the frame itself weighs somewhere in the range of seven pounds, so it's not particularly light. Now you will see these anodized purple accents kind of throughout the build. And I personally think they go really well with this sort of green goldish color of the frame. Now the name of the colorway for this frame, and I think Kona uses this on a lot of other bikes, it's called Turismo Olive. It's pretty sweet. Now at the front of the bike, the fork is a 150 millimeter RockShox Revelation that I pulled off of my 2018 Santa Cruz High Tower and actually ended up reducing the travel to 140 millimeters so that the axle to crown dimension would align with the intended geometry for the Hanzo. Now for the cockpit, I have a mix of old and new parts. I've got a short 35 millimeter stem and some 800 millimeter E13 bars that I cut down to 780. Now the goal for this build is kind of to just find a balance between performance, cost, and weight. And obviously you're always trying to balance those things with a new bike build. And so for wheels and tires, I went with the Hunt XC wide rims, which are only 25 millimeters internal width, but they weigh a little bit less than the trail wides, which have an internal width of 30 millimeters. Now by today's standards, that's a little bit narrow for a mountain bike, especially since I'm running a 29 by 2.5 inch rear A-line tire from Terravale and the slightly wider front tire, which I had lying around. And this is a Terravale Honcho 29 by 2.6 inch width. Now if you look at some of the charts of inner rim width versus maximum tire size, both of these tires are sort of right there on the upper limit, if not slightly over. And so it's a little bit of an experiment to see what happens if you run a really wide tire on a relatively narrow rim. Now I am running tubeless front and rear, and over the past few rides, everything seems to be okay. Uh, no pinch flats and no burp tires or anything like that. So it seems like so far, as long as I get the pressure right, these narrow-ish rims should be okay. Now again, I was trying to save a little bit of money on this build. So I used a mix of parts that I had lying around and some parts off other bikes. Now the drivetrain is the Microshift Advent X 1x10 drivetrain, but I actually took off the Poseidon Redwood, which I'm now running single speed for the time being. Whoa. And for cranks and bottom bracket, went with a pretty standard Shimano MT800 bottom bracket. And for cranks, I went with the SLX uh, M7100 cranks, as opposed to the M7120 crank. Now, the reason that I chose a non-boost crank for this boost-spaced rear hub all kind of comes down to the chain line. And this is balanced between matching up chain lines for optimal shifting and maximizing chain clearance in the bottom bracket area. So if you're curious about all that, you can check out this video up here, which goes pretty deep into the idea of overlock neck dimension and chain lines. Now, for pedals, I went with the pretty affordable one-up composite pedals just to kind of save some money and these honestly just work as well as any other metal pedal that I've ever tried. Now for brakes I went with the Shimano Dior disc brakes and honestly as far as hydraulic brakes go I'm more a fan of Shimano over SRAM just because they use mineral oil and to me the bleed process is a little bit more straightforward but I was a little bit on the fence about going with the SLX brakes versus the Dior which is one step lower. Now I've got the SLX brakes on my high tower and I love those brakes they're basically all the power I ever need they modulate well and they bite really strong and so I was kind of curious to see See what the difference would be with these Dior brakes, which are one level below. Now I know these don't come with a toolless reach adjustment, which I don't really care about. And I believe there are some other differences between the two models. And so eventually I'll put out a video of the Dior versus the SLX brakes and kind of offer my thoughts over the long term. Now another place where I try to save some money is in the dropper post. Ah, I reused the old Raceface Affect. I think it's one of the first generation Affect posts that they made. 
And it's also a takeoff at the 2018 Hightower. And to be honest, it's not really working out for me. It was already returning really slow and kind of sticking halfway up before I replaced it. But I thought, you know, maybe refreshing the cables and the housing would kind of revive it, but it didn't. Now I basically have to kind of hold the lever down and pull up on the post at the same time in order to get it to come all the way up which kind of defeats the purpose of the dropper. So I do have a new PNW Components Loam Dropper ready to go in. I just need to get the appropriate lever to go with it. Now I know that with the newer Affect seat posts, you can repressurize them using the Schrader valve at the top of the seat post. But when I opened up this seat post, it actually didn't have that. It just had this sort of lock nut at the top. And I wasn't really willing to take the whole thing apart and try and service the internals. So maybe some of you have had this issue with the older Race Face Affect seat posts. Let me know down in the comments if you know how to solve this issue. Now lastly, for the saddle, obviously saddles are very personal. I'm just running a pretty budget, uh, specialized bridge sport or something saddle on here that I actually ride on a lot of my other bikes as well. It's just really comfortable, it's affordable, it's not super light, but you know, it fits well. And that, I believe, is everything. Now again, I've got the unboxing video, I've got a couple of how-tos regarding the fork and the cranks. I've got a build video up as well, which is a shot 100% in slow motion for you know, dramatic effect. But I think that's gonna wrap it up. This is a new steel hardtail that I've been riding for 2023. So far over the past few rides, it's been super fun. Definitely a new challenge going hardtail from a full suspension. You know, I actually haven't ridden a proper hardtail since I first started mountain biking, which was back in high school. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this one. If I missed anything or if you have any other questions on this build, just let me know down below and I'll get back to you. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't already, see you next time.